As late summer approaches, the fire season begins in California. Fires will soon rage across the state, destroying homes and killing people in its path. Typically, as mid-November approaches and precipitation picks up, Californians in high-risk areas breathe a sigh of relief. Cal Fire, or California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, is the fire department of the California Natural Resources Agency and is in charge of preventing and stopping fires across the state. They rely heavily on convicts to help supply the needed firefighting labor. The California Conservation Camp Program, part of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, operates 35 fire camps across the state. Let's explore these incarcerated firefighters. We'll start by checking out the history of the Conservation Camp Program, then discuss camp operations, along with some of the larger fires they have recently fought, and finish with criticisms of the program. Prison labor is nothing new in America. States across the country use it in various ways some for license plates, others for office goods. The fire camp comes from road camps, which were established in 1915 by the CDCR for the purpose of expanding the roadways into inhospitable terrain. The Civilian Conservation Corps of the 1930s also laid the groundwork for California's conservation camp program. World War II would rock the country, and every able-bodied man would be sent to fight the Germans and Japanese. Inmates would have to step in even more to fill this void and keep California from going up in flames. The Rainbow Conservation Camp was the first permanent camp, which was set up near San Diego in 1946. This would begin a long-term partnership between CAL FIRE and CDCR. There would be times when the funding came without any issue, but other times, including under former Governor Ronald Reagan, the budget would be cut. Rainbow Conservation Camp would again make history in 1983, when it was converted to a female camp this was due to litigation filed by female inmates, alleging that they were not given the same opportunities. One administrator would say of women joining the program, women aren't as strong, no offense, but they don't have the upper body strength of men. Over the years, a number of camps would fluctuate, and in October 2020, eight fire camps would close. These camps had not been operated at full strength, and consolidation helped reduce budget issues. In 2023, there would be 35 fire camps spread across 25 California counties. Technically, the fire camps are classified as minimum security facilities. They are staffed with correctional officers just like any other prison. According to the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, the primary mission of the Conservation Camp Program is to support state, local, and federal government agencies as they respond to emergencies, such as fires, floods, and other natural or man-made disasters. The responsibilities of the fire camp are split between CDCR and CAL FIRE. CDCR is responsible for the selection, supervision, care, and discipline of the inmates, while CAL FIRE maintains the camp, supervises the work of the inmate fire crews, and is responsible for inmate custody while on daily grade projects. As of August 2022, there was 1,669 incarcerated people housed in the fire camps. There are also support inmates at the camps, which include positions such as cooks, laundry workers, landscapers, and water treatment plant workers. How does an inmate join the program? Well, there are minimum requirements. Those include the inmate must be within eight years of release, must be physically able for vigorous activity, and no physical, mental, or dental limitations. But that isn't all. Several factors may exclude you from participating in the program. No sex offenses, no life sentences, no escapes from a secure facility, no arson convictions, no gang affiliation, no public interest cases, no violent felonies, and no excessive misconduct while incarcerated. I'm sure many of these exclusions limit much of the offender population. Once you qualify and are selected, a short training program will commence. In order to save California from fires, all you apparently need is two weeks of training, one of which is strictly completed in the classroom. The training is done at two prisons, California Correctional Center in Northern California and Sierra Conservation Center in Central California. However, California Correctional Center has been ordered closed by Governor Newsom in 2023, with all fire training responsibilities being shifted to the Sierra Conservation Center. Once training is complete and the offender is placed at the assigned fire camp, they will start earning $2.90 to $5 a day. 
if called to a fire, an hourly rate of one to two dollars is paid. Shockingly low for a job that you could be killed doing. On average, other positions in California prisons range from eight cents an hour to 95 cents an hour, making it one of the highest paid positions. When not fighting fires, other projects are undertaken, such as flood control and trail maintenance. Before we move on to the 2022 fire season and deadly consequences of the program, hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy my content. In 2022 alone, there were 7,667 confirmed fires across the state of California, with 363,939 total acres being burned. 772 buildings were destroyed, with 104 more being damaged. Mosquito Fire in Northern California's Placer and El Dorado counties was the largest in 2022. Allegedly started by PG&E electrical equipment, 2022 was considered a down year for fires. But nonetheless, incarcerated firefighters were there every step of the way battling the blazes. As you can imagine, fighting fires is one of the most dangerous jobs, and inmates are not immune from death or serious injury. In the last several years, at least four have died in the line of duty, and not just from burns or smoke inhalation. Matthew Beck passed away after a 120-foot tree fell on him. Frank Anaya was running a chainsaw in San Diego County when he lost control, cutting his leg and femoral artery. Anthony Colchina passed away during a grueling training hike at Sierra Conservation Center. Lastly, Shauna Jones was fighting the Mulholland Fire in 2016 when a boulder would roll down the hill, striking and killing her. CDCR Secretary Scott Kernan said, her death is a tragic reminder of the danger that inmate firefighters face when they volunteer to confront fires to save homes and lives. In order to offer additional training to those exemplary firefighters that were in the program, in 2018, California opened the Ventura Training Center. Once an inmate is released, they can apply for the 14-month program. They become fully certified wildland firefighters, with half of graduates accepting positions even prior to graduation. The pay of these firefighters has been an ongoing criticism of the program. The other major criticism, which seems to have been recently addressed, is the inability to gain employment following their release in a firefighter position. Governor Newsom signed a bill in 2020 that allows them to be hired as firefighters in the community. He said, this legislation writes a historic wrong and recognizes the sacrifice of thousands of incarcerated people who have helped battle wildfires in our state. And I would like to thank the legislature for passing this bill. The bill would allow for expungement of some crimes so that needed certifications, such as EMT, can be obtained. The story of these firefighters was also made into an action drama TV show, Fire Country. The show has received criticism as being inaccurate and exploitative but was renewed for a second season in 2022. This was a chasing crime profile of the California Conservation Camp program. Leave a comment and tell me your thoughts on it. As always, see you next time.